Hello everyone. Well, in this video, we will start with HTTP async client. Now, for creating the HTTP async client, the steps remain same. The only difference will be at step 2. So, in our previous case, we use HTTP client builder class for creating the client. But in the current scenario, we are going to use HTTP async client builder class. So let me search this particular class in the documentation. So we are going to use this particular class for creating the async client. And as you can see here, it contains same set of method which were present inside the HTTP client builder. Now first of all, I need to add a dependent jar. So again inside the maven repository I will search for HTTP async client and I am going to add this entry in our pom.xml After that inside the helper package I will create one more class called HTTP async client helper. Now this class will contain the method for SSL as well as without the SSL. So as I told you I am going to use this particular class but before that let me copy couple of methods from our REST API helper class. So the method which I am going to copy is this one where we are setting the custom header and also where we are getting the HTTP entity because this piece of code will remain same. Now after this in order to provide the support for SSL I am going to create one more method which will override the certificate verification process. So public static void get SSL context and this method will return as the SSL context object and as we know that the context means we are setting up the environment. So the first thing which we need to do is to override the trust strategy. So trust equal to new trust strategy and this method is going to return as true. After that I will use SSL context builder class to get the object of SSL context. So SSS, SSL context builder dot create dot load trust material which is going to take the type of trust strategy and the build method which will give us the object of SSL context. So I am going to add the return statement here and because of this I need to change the return type of this method and as we know that it is going to throw the checked exception so I will use the throws keyword with this method. Now based on the SSL context object I will create the client that means if the context object is null I will create the normal client if the context object is not null then I will create the client with the SSL support. So here again I will create one more method so let me call it as get async client or let me call it as get HTTP async client. Now the argument to this method will be of type SSL context. Now if you look at the REST API helper class here we used closable HTTP client. Similarly, for async, we are going to use closable HTTP async client. So if I search here for closable, as you can see here, there is a class called closable HTTP async client. So we are going to use this particular class. And you can see here, this particular class implements the interface that is HTTP async client. So I am going to use this particular class. 
So here the return type of this method will be closable HTTP async client. So I need to import the package. Now inside this, based on the context object, I will create the type of client. So if context is null. So in that case, I want a client without the SSL support. So as I told you, this time we are going to use the HTTP async client builder. So I will call this class. Inside this, we have a method dot create. And along with that, we have a method dot build, which will return us the type Closable HTTP async client. So here I will use return HTTP async client builder dot create dot build. And if the context object is not null, then I will add the support for SSL. So return HTTP async client builder dot create dot set SSL context which will be our context object and dot build okay so these are the changes which we need to do if we are dealing with the HTTP async client